Can you talk for a few minutes more in depth about the math, like why matrices worked so well and how you developed the math that led to the age? That's a good question. Well, if we are down to making comparisons, if we didn't know about matrices, we may have a line and we lay out all the things on the line and compare the first with the second, the third, and so on. We have a tally of numbers of comparisons. <coughs> How are we going to use, combine these numbers to derive priorities from the judgment? Remember. So, a matrix is a terrific framework for laying out the comparisons because you list the elements you're comparing on the, to the left side of the matrix and on top and then you compare the first one with every other one including itself so it gets a one and the second so on so it's a very understandable framework. In addition matrix theory was developed to, to solve equations, linear equations and by laying our numbers of matrix form then we are able to uh, get back the scale underlying. Let me explain this. Assume that the things we're comparing have measurements, and let these measurements be W1, W2, W3, Wn, and W1, Wn, and then when you compare first with first W1 over W1, you compare the first with the second W1 over W2, and so on. So you have a matrix of Ws that is reciprocal, because if uh, you compare the first, say, with the second at W1 and W2, then when you compare the second with the first, W2 over W1. And of course, down the diagonal, it had W1 and W2 over W2, so you get ones. So we have a reciprocal matrix that's positive. And uh, a friend of mine, a known mathematician, had gone to see if people had considered reciprocal matrices before I developed them. And it turns out, no, they had done, they used to deal with matrices with subtraction uh, occurs, but not uh, reciprocity. What's uh, nice about the matrix is that when you multiply a matrix by itself, you get paths of different length. A matrix represents paths connecting them and the intensity along these paths. If you have a matrix that's consistent and you multiply it by itself, you get it back as it is with a constant which doesn't really matter in the priority because you normalize them. But if it's not consistent, then you go on and you're able to measure from the result of that, you, be, you have an eigenvalue problem for deriving priorities and uh, <coughs> you're able to measure how inconsistent you are and identify the most inconsistent factors and ask to revise judgments and if judgments cannot be revised because they understand people and then you go to the second most inconsistent and so on. So it, the matrix approach also systematizes the improvement and derivation of priorities. Now, um, some may ask, well, what are, what's this consistency? Well, consistency is a necessary condition for capturing the real world. Now, presumably, you know, if you had the apple, you had their weights, uh, then you have consistent relation among them. But uh, human beings cannot be that consistent. And you want to alert them to the fact that some of their understanding may be too loose, they could tighten it. And uh, so consistency is necessary, but it's not sufficient, because a crazy person can have a perfectly consistent view of a world that doesn't exist. So how to make the judgments uh, consistent, you need the expert knowledge experts who will study and debate the matter so they can improve their understanding 
and one would be guided by that, and even that understanding may be inadequate. There are times where our understanding does not enable to make the necessary comparisons, the right ones, to make a good decision. So in that case, we will have to get that kind of knowledge. When I worked in this armament, we were concerned about the damage that certain missiles can cause, and it was not fully understood how, how bad it was. And uh, several million dollars were spent to test those missiles to develop that judgment to make the decision out.